Now we are discussing a concept of electronic configuration suggested by Niels Bohr that is called as Aufbau principle. This is something German word Aufbau. The meaning is that to fill up. So how electrons are fill up in the uh, atom. Now in previous part we discussed that there are shells n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 even that uh, shells are having name n equal to 1 that means k n equal to 2 that is l like that but that configuration is not that much sufficient because uh, that is applicable approximately till atomic number 20 that is applicable but further to that we require some different chart so I am showing you here right now the chart try to understand first because at the end we are going to discuss in detail once again with other data. So right now we are uh, making a chart that is called as Aufbau principle. Now here how electrons are arranged in the shells for that purpose this chart is there. But uh, how that is shell then there are subshells and capacities of that. So that we are going to discuss right now. You are aware that uh, people in different part of world they discover different styles of writing. Say for example in India we are writing this way from left to right. In Europe also people are writing this way only that left to right. But in Arabian subcontinent Persia, they are writing from right to left, like Urdu or ancient Indian script that is called as Kharosh tree, but that was not Indian script, that was you know, introduced by Persian people, particularly in the valley of Indus, this script was introduced that is called as Kharosh tree script during Hakamani Empire. Japanese people you are aware, they are writing, actually if I have writing this way and I should call this right but if I am writing this way and what I should call but Japanese people are writing in this way top to bottom whereas chemist now writing from bottom to top now what Aufbau principle is there for that purpose various charts and various methods are available I am teaching you only one method because my suggestion is that follow only that one method otherwise lots of confusion people are doing and ultimately they are making atomic catastrophe so forget of that try to follow only one method now I will show here that method so first the orbits irrespective of uh, their n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 3 like that they are uh, given distributed in the format S P D F. They are subshells of every atom, uh, every orbit. S is having capacity two. It is written on superscript. Superscript means above this, and that is in also form of small point. But don't read this as S square. While reading, we have to read as S2. The method is this P6, D10, and F14. Again, telling these are the maximum capacities of electrons in the suborbit or subshell. So, these are the capacities I have mentioned over here. Now, how to write? It is 1s. I will start from this way. 1s. 1 indicate first orbit. S indicate subshell. Then 2s. After 2s, I will write here 2p. Say for s, pdf. Sorry, for first 1, pdf is not there. For 2, it is only p. So s as well as p. 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 
for m. See, every time I am increasing one one orbital. So here s, then p, then d, and then f is last. Then phi s, phi p, phi d, phi f. May be possible. They are there, but whatever total atoms available today, they are having only this much. Six s, six p. 6d, 6f, 7s, 7p, 7d, 7f. That's all. This is first. We are writing out all these orbitals clearly. So when I am saying 5d, it indicate main shell number five, sub shell d. Capacity of d is 10. It is written. Now. We have to join these, so we have to put a track, and like that we are arranging them in the track. So first track, second track, only one station here, only one station here. Now third track, having two stations. While you are going to writing out, at that time you should not write one, two, three. Only draw lines. In some book, they are showing lines this way, but over after that coming this way, and like that. But it is making diagram more complicated. Instead of that, keep in mind, travel from here to here, end, then go to next track, go to next track, fourth, fifth. Six. Don't miss out anything. Uh, seven. Otherwise, what happens that sometimes some letters are missing out. Eight. Nine. And lastly, only one. Ten. Now, how to carry out electronic configuration? Let us perform it for sodium. So I am writing here sodium atomic number eleven, mass number twenty-three. Uh, we discuss this. How many electrons are there in sodium? Answer is eleven. Why? Because this is atomic number. Now I have to arrange eleven electrons here. In previous part, we discuss how electrons are arranged according to KLM. But now we are going to discuss in detail. So uh, I have to assign eleven electrons. So I will follow this track. Track number one. It is one s. So I will write one s. How many electrons can be accommodated in s orbit? Answer is maximum two. So I will write here two because I have eleven electrons to fill. Out of that two, we have filled out. Next track 2s. See, we are following this track ended. Now start next track. Only one station is there. Write down 2s. What is the capacity of s? Again 2. So write down 2. Don't read 1s square. Read 1s 2. 2s 2. Then go to third track. You will find 2p. So in 2p we can fill six electrons. Capacity is six. Reminder one. So check out it's two plus two, four plus six, ten. So after two p there is three s. So write down three s. And no doubt capacity is of two, but available electron is only one. Therefore write down it as one. So this way we have mentioned that electrons in sodium they are like this. Now the previous questions. In previous session only we have doubt that why electronic configuration of calcium is two eight eight two. Why not two eight five and five? Okay, that answer we are going to find out here. Calcium atomic number twenty, mass number forty. That means how many electrons are there? Twenty. Now we have to fill twenty electrons here. So I have to follow this chart. One is two. 
then go to second track 2s2 then third track 2p6 after that 3s2 keep i on the number of electrons so it is 10 plus 2 12 i have to accommodate 20 electron so 12 electrons already accommodated till 3s then go to next track fourth track we will get 3p so 3p6 now number of electron 10 plus 6 uh, 16 plus 2 18 so 18 electrons are filled here till 3p many students are committing mistake in general they after 3p they write 3d so this is not this way we have to go that's why i have produced track here so after 3p go to this line you will get there 4s and therefore it is 4s and we have two electrons so i am filling out now is it according to previous configuration answer is definitely yes you are aware sodium configuration is 2 8 1 let us check first shell only two electrons are there second shell 2 plus 2 uh, sorry uh, that 2 2 that is second shell 2 plus 6 8 electrons are there and last shell only third shell is last one so electronic configuration is according to previous 2 8 1 let us go for a calcium first shell only one so write down two second shell 2s and 2p so 2 plus 6 8 third shell 3s and 3p total 2 plus 6 8 and fourth shell 2 getting idea that's why right. the configuration is 2 8 8 2 and not <coughs> and not 2 8 5 5 or any probability of that so here it is clearly mentioned according to Aufbau principle so Aufbau principle is actually a fantastic way to give electronic configuration of an element so this is performed by me now you have to perform uh, obviously take this down pause this video take this all chart because you have to produce this chart your own produce that and then after writing these two example, uh, go for the most complicated here. Then carry out electronic configuration of uranium yourself. Atomic number 92, mass number 238. Try to do it yourself. Your, uh, what we can say, uh, management skill, calculation skill, like that and patience. Everything is tested here. Try to carry out electronic configuration of uranium. Uh, one more spoon feeding. You are aware how many electrons are there now? 92. You have to fill, uh, fill 92 electrons now. Start uh, electronic configuration of uranium now. Uh, you are aware that your skill, that uh, management skill and all calculation skill, they are playing important role here. So I will write here in a somewhat smaller size. Because I have to accommodate totally 92 electrons. As atomic number of uranium is 92, we have to accommodate 92 electrons. So 1s2, C, 1s2, then 2s, 2s2, then third track 2p6, 3s2, next track 3p6 then 4s2 so after 3p again i am telling 3d is not filled after 3p it is 4s now fifth track 3d 10 i will keep here only 3d 10 and i will make total of all so 10 10 20 10 30 so here i will write total 30 so yet 62 electrons to fill so after 3d it is 4p so I will write here from 4p 6 then 5s2 now 6 track 4d 10 5p 6 6s2 ok uh, then we are going to 7 track where we will get 4f14 then 5d 10 
so I will make total here only that is 6 plus 2 8 18 24 26 30 40 50 so total is 80 so reminder 12 so 5d then I will go to 6p 6p is 6 reminder is 12 out of that 6 7 is 2 8 so uh, reminder is here 12 out of that 8 is there that means reminder is 4 after 7 is we are going to next track that is 5f no doubt 5f I can write 14 but I don't have electron electrons are only 4 so I have to write here 4 electrons and then you can check the total 6 plus 2 8 plus 4 12 total is 2 5 plus 1 6 plus 3 9 92 is the total so this way we carried out electron configuration of uranium with skill certain skills not high class but these skills are important this is the way we are carrying out electronic configuration of sodium uh, sorry uranium but uh, after making this type of huge electronic configuration we want to assign them how I have to assign like that according to number first shell first second third like that let me clarify here I will collect only 1s is there so I will write 1s 2s 2p all right 3 it is 3s2 3p6 I have one last time that after 3p it is 4s then it is 3d but here I have to arrange all three together and therefore after carrying out this configuration I am assured then only I am writing 3d10 now 4s2 check out 4s 4p 4d 4f so I will write 4s2 4p6 4d10 4f 14 after that 5s so 5s2 5p6 5d10 and last 5f4 now 6 shell it is 6s2 6p6 6d not under construction so keep it as it is and 7s you will come to know this is called as shell under construction whereas last shell is 7s2 or 7 remain unchanged uh, let me clarify uh, would you like to carry out one more electronic configuration next element of uranium is neptunium atomic number 93 that means what you have to fill up 93 electrons so right now you fill up with so many only one electron you have to add where you are going to add 5f5 next element of neptunium is plutonium 5f6 that means this is called as shell under construction okay so last shell uh, last shell remains same second last shell remains same and the electrons are added in third last shell this is the peculiarity of uranium therefore it is called as inner transition element uh, you might have noticed that uh, when usually uh, we describe periodic table we say that if last three shells are incompletely filled in we are calling them as uh, inner transition element question is always there in mind that if all earlier shells are filled first and then higher shells then why this is the situation why three shells are remaining uh, semi filled the thing is that uh, according to Apo principle this is the way and therefore uranium is having last three shells incompletely filled shell under construction is third last whereas second last and last shell remain unchanged so I hope you might have carried out all these electronic configuration nicely after successfully carrying out electronic configuration of uranium 92 and uh, neptunium 93 plutonium 94 i will give you somewhat simpler tasks to do
now carry out electronic configuration of phosphorus atomic number 15 mass number 31 so try to do electronic configuration of phosphorus now you may say that it is quite easy after observing this all say it's we have to accommodate only 15 electron first pause this video try to make yourself then i will do so 15 electrons i have to accommodate 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 reminder 10 plus 2 12 15 electron that means reminder 3 so electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p3 so this is the way electronic configuration of phosphorus now if you are going this way you will find it is easy so first we have carried out simpler task then tough task and then again simpler task but life is not so simple as we are thinking so here another rule is applicable and we are going to do that that is called as Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity or that called as Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity that says that uh, when d generated orbitals are available first let me clear you the concept d generated orbitals d generated orbitals means orbital having same energy level then they are called as d generated orbitals now here if i am saying these two orbitals let us check this is 3s graphically i will show this now 3p graphically i will show 3p orbital is divided into three part whereas this is called as energy gap so 3s2 so this is first electron second electron now here question is that why i have shown this way because electron is shown uh, it is revolving around nucleus but at the same time it is having spin motion it is revolving uh, rotating around its axis also you are aware that planets they are revolving around sun in our solar system but at the same time they are revolving around their axis also same way electrons are also revolving around their axis in case of planet is it possible that all planets revolve in same direction? Answer is no. You will get surprising data that Venus and Uranus, these two planets revolve in reverse way. Means Earth rotates, uh, sorry, uh, not revolve, rotate. Earth rotates from west to east direction. Am I wrong? I am revising. Earth rotates west to east direction. That's why you will find that sun is rising at east and setting at west. So earth rotates from west to east. Many planets rotate in same way, but Venus and Uranus, though they rotate in exactly opposite way, means they will rotate from east to west. Alright, so this is the case. So electron also rotate clockwise as well as anti-clockwise. So here, by indicating this type of arrow, I am indicating electron rotating clockwise. By indicating this arrow, I am rotating electron indicating anti-clockwise. So this way we are showing spin of electron, that is clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now according to the principle of magnetism, any charge body is in motion, I am revising, any charge body is in motion it is going to produce magnetic field around it. So electron is a charge body. It is rotating also. That's why it is producing magnetic field around it. The clockwise spin will produce different magnetic field. Anti-clockwise will produce different magnetic field. Opposite magnetic fields are there. Therefore, there is attraction. And that's why in an orbital, two electrons can be accommodated. But always keep in mind one will spin clockwise, then other must spin anti-clockwise. Parallel spin is not an energetically stable condition. So here I should not say both are clockwise or both are anti-clockwise. I have to say 
So one is clockwise, other is anticlockwise. Now, uh, p orbital, according to our uh, data, I will explain in some other lecture. But this is called a Zeeman effect and Stork effect. So in order to accommodate that, they say that p orbital is subdivided into uh, according to say uh, x axis is there then we are calling it as 3px orbital according to y orbital then we are calling it as 3py orbital and according to z orbit uh, sorry z axis it is called as 3p z orbital so this way now i am changing this 3s to 3p3 in format of 3s box to electrons 3px 3py 3pz now as here is energy gap we are not saying these orbitals are degenerated but as here there is no energy gap so px py pz they are considering degenerated orbital that means they have same energy now first electron how many electrons i have to accommodate three first electron i will say this way second electron actually i should show this way but no why because there is space available so why to go here so second electron will remain independent third electron will also remain independent instead of pairing out they will try to remain unpaired as far as possible Hans rule is saying the same thing when degenerated orbitals are available electron will try to remain unpaired as far as possible so how we are going to modify this configuration so this configuration i am rewriting 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 is unchanged here i will write this way but p i am now splitting this way that 3p x1 3p y1 3p z1 don't say 3p x1 y1 z1 because in mathematics we have habit of making common so in 3px, 3py, 3pz, take 3p common, xyz. So don't do that. Because these are the names of orbital. And we can't say that with names of uh, uh, orbital, something we can take common. So this is 3px, 3py, 3pz. This way we can do electronic configuration of phosphorus. Now, next element you will try first, then I will try chlorine, atomic number 17. So first try yourself. I am just writing here chlorine atomic number 70. Mass number suppose 35. We are going to discuss electronic configuration of chlorine. So now your experience one, 1H2, 2H2, 2P6, 3H2. Be fine. So according to above principle, this is our electronic configuration. This is according to above principle. Now we have to apply this Hung's rule of maximum multiplicity. So I have to check for 3p5. So in case of this, first electron, second, third. But now there is no place for fourth electron to go. And then pairing is possible, but in reverse way. Now, not necessary electron should go in X only. It may go in Y, it may go in Z, anywhere. But we have to consider alphabetically for sake of convenience. So, we are saying fourth electron is going this way, fifth electron will go this way. Okay? Whereas there is no sixth electron, so no question. So, I will modify this configuration as 3P X2, 3P Y2. 3p z1 so this way we are modifying chlorine keep in mind Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity that is used when p d or f these orbitals are last orbital and they are incompletely fit ok for argon no need to explain argon is having atomic number 18 so you can write down simply 3p 6 Okay, uh, but if you are talking of incompletely filled orbital, then this is required. 
so this is we are discussing about electronic configuration and we just studied out hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity